All right, guys, so coming with some form and setup tips here for a trap bar deadlift. Before I get into how do you actually wanna execute it, what are some of the things you wanna focus on, just really talking about what is the goal of trap bar de uh, deadlifts. So first and foremost, um, I'll explain that most people do trap bar deadlifts to make the exercise or the deadlift more quad dominant. So to have more range of motion at the knee, more torque at the knee and make your quads work more. That being said, you can really do any type of deadlift variation you want with the bar. The difference is obviously if you're using a straight bar, if I'm trying to make a more quad dominant deadlift, I can't get in this position because if you imagine the bar would be basically through my calf. So the bar creates basically an arbitrary plane that's your shin and at some points your knee can't go through. So basically it's like having a wall the entire time you deadlift that your body has to stay behind. So this doesn't have that obviously. So when you're doing a trap bar, basically your shin can go wherever you want, your knee can go wherever you want. So that being said, you could be in the exact same positions. If this is the position I'm in for a conventional deadlift, I could be in this exact same position with a trap bar. If this is the convention, the position that I would be in for an RDL, I could be in the same position with a uh, trap bar. So basically, the trap bar allows you to deadlift however the hell you want to deadlift. Um, but again, most people, if they're going to do an RDL or a conventional, they'll use a barbell. And again, if you're using a trap bar, it means you want it to be more quad dominant. The only other difference that's just worth mentioning, but I think overall as a wash, is your grip. So obviously, if you're doing a straight bar, you're either going to be pronated, you know, both uh, over over or over under, which I generally don't recommend. With this, obviously, you're going to be in a more neutral position the entire time. But both, really comparing the differences of those, I don't think one's definitively better than the other or one's more advantageous than the other. The big difference is where can your shins go, where can your knees go, and everything else that follows along with that. So obviously, if your knees are further forward, one, you're going to have more torque at the knees, and then at the bottom, you're ultimately going to have more knee flexion extension occurring as opposed to a conventional deadlift. And in turn, anytime your knees are further forward, they're going to be further away from the bar path, and your hips are going to pull further forward and be closer to the bar path. So it's fair to say if you do a knee dominant deadlift with a trap bar, it is more quads, it is less hips, and in turn, obviously, because your spine is attached to your hips and they pull closer to the bar, it's going to be less back, less spine involved as well too. So trap bar, more quad dominant when you're doing a conventional or an RDL, it's going to be more hip and back dominant. So as far as setup and execution goes, really pretty much the same. The main thing you want to focus on is that the only things moving are your ankle joint, your knee joint, and your hip joint. All the joints of your vertebra, so your whole spine, you want fixed and still. Now again, obviously when people do some working sets, sometimes on their last reps there might be a little bit of rounding of stuff. I'm not splitting hairs about what it looks like when there's actual effort, but in general, if you know where you ideally want to be is your neutral spine, which for most people is just staying with a nice tall posture. That's your neutral spine. That's where you want to keep it fixed the entire time that you deadlift. So as far as stance goes, for the most part, it's going to allow for maybe a little bit more width because your hands can be a little bit wider out. So again, whereas for a, a, uh, a conventional bar, you might be kind of stuck keeping it here, keeping your knees inside your arms. If you can go a little bit wider here, that may allow for a little bit more freedom with your stance. Um, so again, go with your comfortable stance as default. I recommend somewhere around hip width or slightly outside of hip width. And then from there, when you drop in and get your position, just make sure you're in a nice neutral spine before you start. Because there is going to be more knee flexion involved, generally there's less hip flexion involved. So people tend to not run out of hip range of motion and in turn make their spine round. And what I mean by that is when you do a conventional deadlift, some people can't hip flex anywhere past this. So if they go lower, they start to spinal round. But if your knees are more forward, that because there's less hip flexion in general, most people don't run out of spine. But it's still worth checking whenever you get in your start position, when you grab the handles, that you have a nice flat back, that you're not in this rounded position to have to start and initiate the, mo the movement. The two things to be aware of for the start position is most trap bars have one or more options. Some of them I've seen actually have adjustable handles. So one, if basically you want the same range of motion that you would have with a barbell, it's going to be this handle. So the handle that is right in line with obviously where you are loading the weight on. Because if you imagine a barbell, this would be the same height. If you had it flipped over and these hands higher, just realize you're starting in basically a two inches higher position before you actually start the deadlift, which might be fine for someone. But just be aware, some people don't actually even think which way these handles are facing and think how much that can change your range of motion. If you have the range of motion to deadlift from the floor with a bar, then you have the range of motion to grab these handles doing a trap bar deadlift. So you get in that position, and then generally I think the best cue out of this, to out of the bottom, is thinking like your leg pressing into the floor, keeping everything else tight and rigid. So when you get in that start position, 
brace your midsection. The best cue I can get for that is if someone was gonna punch you in the stomach, how would you naturally tense your entire torso? That is the position that you wanna be in. You want your lats tight, uh, tensed tight. And then before you pull the same with any deadlift, take a little bit of the slack out. So again, you don't wanna just grab and just yank on the bar. And when you yank the bar, you can kind of hear sometimes the actual inside of the plates kind of catch or the actual bearings. I mean, you don't have bearings in a trap bar, so you won't hear that sound. But if you can hear the inside of the plate kind of moving on the bar itself, you know you've kind of snuff up, snuck up on it and you're being a little bit too explosive. So before you pull, I always say make everything nice and tight. And then again, just feel like you're leg pressing the earth away. And the only last tip that I'll give on that, so hopefully you can see as I'm going, basically it is just my hips extending, my knees extending, my ankle extending to a certain degree, and my spine staying nice and still. Aside from my entire lumbar spine, thoracic spine staying still, you want your cervical spine, stay, spine staying still as well. So as you go down, as your spine angle changes from your, you know, your lumbar to your thoracic, your head should just follow along. So as I go down, don't focus on keeping your head up. Focus more on just letting your head kind of come along for the ride. And I'll have Cody demo a couple here. See if we can put a few things together. So again, taking a stance. Most people where you just kind of go and you like a squat stance is generally a good place to start. So wherever you kind of go your squat stance, dropping down in, create some tension here, some tension in the stomach, everything locked in, leg press the ground away, and then stand up nice and tall. So again, I think for the most part, that was good, we just do a couple more. Nice controlled negatives, stand up nice and tall. You can think as you're finishing the motion, a little bit of this hips forward thing, it's so much more knee dominant that almost like, again, that leg press EQ works well because you're focusing more on what are your quads doing. But all that I mean is as you come to the top and finish, just stop when your hips are right under you. You don't need to do this pull back type thing as you come to the top because that's gonna be a lot of spinal motion. Aside from that, that's good, Cody. It's just like Cody was demonstrating, same as every exercise, nice controlled pace, making sure that you're not just dropping the eccentrics, especially making sure that you're not banging the plates off of the ground to start the motion. If you bang your plates off the ground, realizing you're using momentum and not your muscles to actually move stuff. Um, so you want to have nice controlled eccentrics. You can do a dead stop if it really helps you stay clean with your form. You can do a light tap and go and then a little bit more explosive on the eccentrics. So again, purpose first and foremost, more quad dominance, less back, less hips. From there, you really want to take your time with your setup. Hip-ish width or slightly wider is good. Create a lot of tension before the movement starts. So brace your midsection, brace your erectors, brace your latch. Try and have your entire torso still and fixed the entire motion. And then from there, think leg press off of the floor, driving hard with your quads. And of course, to a certain degree, glutes, adductors, even hamstrings a little bit. Um, and just keeping all of this brace nice and tight going through.